Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys how we are setting up a brooder for baby chicks and baby ducks. All right, so before we jump into all the logistics, let me just say that this is going to look a little bit different if you are doing just a few backyard chickens, if you're buying 50 meat birds, that's all going to be a little bit different in terms of exact products you need, but this is the general idea of what you need to raise baby chicks, uh, raise baby ducks um, in a brooder. So the exact items and sizes will be different, but the general idea of the basics that you need are all the same. So grab some coffee or something and let's talk baby chicks. All right, so the biggest thing to remember with baby chicks is they are extremely fragile. Um, they are a lot of times coming to you, if you're getting them from a hatchery, they're gonna be a day or so old when they come to you. If you're getting them from a feed store, they might be a little bit older than that, a few days, a week, um, just depending on when you get them. But they are very, very fragile. They don't have their feathers yet. They have this kind of like down soft fur on the outside, but it doesn't keep them warm. They can't regulate their own temperature. So without Mama Hen to do that for them, basically to take them under her wing and warm them, them, your job basically with baby chicks is to protect them, um, to get them warm, to get them fed, um, and just to sort of as much as you can emulate the environment that they would have if they were with mama hen. So basically what you want to do is, again, depending on how many chicks you're going to have, you want to have some kind of tub or you know some kind of like you can do like the galvanized steel tubs from the farm store this is a big rubber one that's a feed bucket that we uh, can use out on the farm when we're done with this we can use it to water the horses or goats or llamas or whatever um, so it's it's a multi-purpose thing so you need some kind of container if you use something that's like cardboard that's gonna get really nasty over time. Um, so you do wanna use something that you can easily clean. So this is something that I can take outside and hose it out and clean it um, because baby chicks, chickens in general are messy and they poop a lot. So you're gonna wanna keep all that contained and be able to clean it easily. So that's what you want for a container. I also think that having a container that is round and not square is also helpful for it to have those curved edges because you'll see if you ever go in the feed store you'll see how baby chicks like pile up and they can often pile one into the corner and squish it and kill it like suffocate it so having there be no place for them it's kind of a good general rule for a lot of animals our horses too we we uh, round our fence corner so they can't pin each other in a corner and of course it's not intentional but it can happen so having a rounded container like that can help prevent that from happening and of course you want your brooder to be sturdy you want it to not be able to be tipped over knocked over um, you really again depending on where you're keeping it i'm keeping mine in my master bathroom um, because we don't have a garage we don't have a bonus room we don't have any anywhere like that in our house. Um, so our master bathroom is really the only place that I can keep it where I can control temperature, um, the outside air temperature, as well as obviously the temperature within the brooder. We're gonna use a heater. I'll talk about that next, but you need to find a safe place where cats, dogs, kids can't freely get to your chicks. Um, children can very unintentionally, of course, kill baby chicks very easily. Uh, like I said, they're fragile, picking them up, squeezing them, dropping them. Um, they can be gone like that. So you wanna make sure that you are putting them in a place where you can really protect them. Now next, you're gonna to wanna to put some litter in the bottom, some type of litter. Now again, if you're getting those chicks at a day old from a hatchery, you might consider using a few layers of paper towels for a little bit because they're a little unstable on their feet. They need to kind of get their, their skills and having that kind of white solid uh, ground makes it really easy for them to see the food, the water, the brooder, all of that kind of stuff. So it's it can be really helpful, especially if you've got real small chicks um, that are really like a day or so old. You can start there and then you want to move on to some kind of shaving. So cedar is really the main thing you want to avoid. Cedar shavings are a no-go for baby chicks. So you want to stick to something that's like a pine shaving. Um, but again, you want to be careful here because if you get it too finely ground, it's going to be very very dusty so not only is that going to make a mess wherever you have that but that's a lot of dusty stuff that these little chicks are breathing in and it can cause problems so you want to get a pine shaving that is thicker hardier um, it's also going to be more absorbent because you're going to be cleaning this thing a lot um, every day you need to go through and you can usually just go through and move around the litter to kind of move around the pee and the poop that's in there 
and then add some fresh on top if you need to. Depending on how long you're gonna keep your chicks inside their brooder, you know, you can kind of let that build up over time. But the best way, especially if you're keeping it in your house, is to move around that litter every day. Um, you know, you can go through and scoop out any big clumps and put down fresh. And then once a week, empty the whole thing and put down a whole new fresh layer of litter. Uh, again, these chickens for us that we're bringing home today are, um, they're gonna be laying hens, so they're not meat birds. Uh, we're not doing a huge quantity of them. So these are our laying hens slash, you know, our pet chickens. They serve two purposes. So uh, we really, I think in any case, whether they're meat birds or not, should do the best by your animals to treat them the best that you can. So for us, we just want them to be really comfortable and have, you know, the best life that they can have. So some kind of like hearty shaving. So you've got your container, you've got your wood shavings or paper towels, depending. Then you wanna move on to your heat source. Like I said, baby chicks cannot regulate their body temperatures well at all. So normally they would be under mama hen and she would keep them nice and toasty warm. Um, and then they would go out and explore a little bit and then be able to come right back and go underneath mama's wing. So you wanna kind of recreate that as much as you can. There are multiple heat options. A very common one is a heat lamp and you can mount that. So so it hangs over and puts kind of a heat spot down in the brooder. Um, this is something that I would say is probably the most complicated part of it. You've got to make sure that you keep the temperature at the right level in there. And so you're going to want to keep it around that first week of life. You're going to want to keep it around 95 degrees. And then you kind of go down from there. Um, each week you can drop the temperature a little bit and help them um, to regulate. But you want to make sure to pay attention to your chicks and their behavior. If they are all huddled under the heat lamp and are not coming out at all they're probably too cold you probably don't have it warm enough they're all dispersed around the edges of the container far away from it and they're like Ugh. I mean you can kind of tell that it's like it's too hot and they need to get away from it so you want to have a good balance of your chicks being able to come in and get warm for a little bit and then they go out if they're up and playing and exploring and checking things out then you've probably got things set up correctly you just want to monitor that make sure you have either some kind of a, a thermogun or a thermometer or something like that in your container Container so that you can check the temperature levels and you want to make sure that you're checking the temperature levels in that heat area Not necessarily so much around it, but in that direct heat area There's another option for the heat source that's uh, just called a brooder But it's a it looks like a plate and it stands up on legs that you can adjust the height on um, And what they basically how that kind of acts is very very similar to mama's wings, right? Because they go underneath it and so it's Instinctual for them to want to go underneath there and cuddle up and and that's a little bit closer to nature um, rather than just a, a heat source with nothing that feels like it's kind of on top of them. So that's what we are gonna try with this round of chicks. Um, I actually have two different ones. The first one is really large for the size container that I have um, because we have a couple different sets of chicks coming and we also have ducks. I have a few different setups, so I'm gonna play around a little bit with what I've got and see what fits and works the best um, because we've got these chicks coming and then um, in about two weeks we'll have some ducks coming. Then we'll have a little break and then we'll got some more coming later in the summer. So uh, we're, we're testing out some different things to see what works best for each group. But I really like the idea of this and this heater also, the particular one that we got at Tractor Supply also kind of will stand up straight. Um, when you're done using it as a brooder, it'll just be like a stand up heater. So if you've got a uh, power run to your chicken coop or whatever, and it's winter time and you wanna add a little extra heat in there for them, you can do it with that, which is great. And that also allows you to, as you are uh, sort of getting your birds hardy and ready to go outside, you can lift that, you can turn it, stand it up and um, sort of change the heat situation in there to get them used to heat fluctuations and things like that before you put them outside. And I do want to mention, do your research on the different heat options. Those heat lamps, while it may seem really simple, there are some hazards that come with the heat lamps. Um, they are big fire hazards, and uh, you just want to be really, really careful with those and make sure that however you're securing them is totally safe, because combining that heat source with those wood shavings is a recipe for fire. So you really, really want to make sure you have everything set up uh, very sturdy and just double, triple check everything and keep a really close eye on the chicks when you've got um, a, a heat lamp like that. 
And the other thing I wanted to mention is when you've got the brooder type heater, do make sure that you don't put it up against a wall or in a corner. You wanna make sure that the chicks can go in and out of it on all sides. Again, you don't want any chicks getting piled on in there where they can't get out and they're overheating um, and they're up against a wall on the backside and they can't pass the other chicks. That's a, a quick way to end up with um, dead baby chicks. So you wanna make sure that uh, they can access everything like 360 in and out on all sides of the brooder so nobody gets trapped. So you've gotta have that container, the shavings, the heat source, and of course, what would be next but food and water. All right, so for food and water, you want to make sure that your food and water sources are close together, um, especially in the beginning while the chicks are learning. And really there's so many different options. Uh, the water, particular water that I got for this one, I think is too big for this setup that we have. So I'm gonna grab something smaller when we're at the store. But the biggest thing is, is you wanna make sure that you're giving your chicks fresh, clean water constantly. Um, you wanna make sure it doesn't get too dirty. You also wanna make sure that your water source isn't too deep where the chicks can drown and also not so much water available that they can get in there. Chicks are very curious little creatures. Um, they like to play around and they will get in water. They will get in food. They will get in and play and all of those things. And if they get in and get too wet um, and then they can't get warmed back up because that obviously is gonna lower their body temperature, that again can be a very bad thing. So you wanna make sure that um, if you have a container like the one we have in here, you can put some rocks, just a few pieces of gravel or rock or something in there to keep the chicks from being able to really get in there and drown themselves or get too wet, um, but where they still have access to water. You can also use the nipple waterers um, for chicks. They hang off the side and they have like a nipple and you can kind of teach them. Uh, the biggest thing is that when you bring them home, if they've come from a farm store, they're gonna know how to eat and drink already, but you might be using a different source of food and water for them. It's gonna look different at your house than it did at the farm store. So you just wanna make sure that you introduce them, take a few of the chicks, chicks, took, take their little beaks and dip it in the water, show them where that is, and then they all kind of learn from each other. That's the cool part about chicks is it's kind of like monkey see, monkey do. Like I said, they're very curious and they're also like, hey, what's she doing over there? I want some of that. And they go and, and do the things they see the other chicks doing. So if you get a couple of them eating and drinking, then often the others will follow. But in my humble opinion, you do want to stick around, watch them for a while, make sure that everybody seems to understand food and water and is getting there and eating and drinking. And then with the food, the biggest thing is, like I said, they are messy little creatures and they will waste a lot of food if you have containers where they can just get in it, they'll poop in it. Um, so you want to use some kind of a container that kind of helps protect your food a little bit um, and something that they can't play around with too much. So we've got the little circular one with holes in it. Uh, you can just use a plastic jar. You can also use a mason jar if you've got a glass mason jar that will fit on top of there. Um, and then the food disperses through the little holes. But you want to make sure that there's enough for all of your chicks to be able to get to the feeder and get some food. Again, there's many different options for feeders and waterers, but you need to find the one that kind of fits your setup the best. But the key is just making sure that they're safe for the chicks and that you've got a good food and water source there. Now the particular type of food that you decide to feed, that's up to you. Um, if you are having chicks that are for laying hens or whatever, uh, you might choose a slightly lower protein because you're not trying to grow your birds really fat, really fast. Um, if you have meat chickens that you're trying to grow fat fast, then you might want to choose something with a much higher percentage of protein in it to fatten those birds up as fast as you can. For these chicks, I had just grabbed this bag of Do More Chick Feed at Tractor Supply. Um, I do have an order from Grubly coming, and I am really excited because I was really impressed and pleased with what I saw on their website. So I've got an order of Chick Feed coming from Grubly as well as treats. They have some really awesome mealworm um, treats. So so those you want to hold off on for a little bit, um, I think about a week or so, two weeks, um, until you start giving them treats. But get them going on the food, make sure that everybody's eating healthy and growing, and then you can start adding in some of the fun stuff with chicks. All right, so that should cover you. If you've got that, you've got your container, you've got your shavings, you know, the bedding in there, you've got a heat source, a reliable, good, safe heat source, you've got food and water, those are the biggest things. And then it's just a matter of taking really good care of your chicks, you know? 
keeping a really close eye on them. Make sure you're giving them lots of fresh water. Uh, they will drink a lot of water. Make sure you've got their food clean and a good food source for them. And then just enjoy the cuteness of baby chicks because that doesn't last long and they turn into big old chickens. <laughs> the baby phase is short with chicks and ducks. Ducks in particular, they grow very fast. The other thing I wanna mention is with ducks, if you are gonna do ducks, we're gonna keep our ducks separate from our chicks. Ducks have a little bit of a different need than chicks, especially when it comes to their need to have water to be in and play in. Um, and also like if you were gonna use the nipple waterers for chicks, ducks can't really eat, drink water out of those. So to me, it's just easier to separate them and give them the exact things that they need. There are people who raise their chicks and ducks together. Um, we're just choosing to do it separate so that we can give everybody a, the ideal environment for each. So we can give everybody the ideal environment, you know, the ideal environment for ducks, the ideal environment for chicks. All right, so that's everything we're doing to set up for our chicks. Now comes the fun part uh, where we get to go to the feed store and pick out our chicks. A few of the kids are going with me and they're gonna get to make a few chicken choices. Um, I'm gonna do my best. I will probably buy um, specifically all females, but I've been trying to educate myself on sexing baby chicks so that should there be a straight run of a breed that I really want, I can see if I can deduce if it's a male or female um, and maybe get to bring home something a little bit different um, than what's just available as all females. So my children are circling me like hawks just waiting to go to the feed store. They're staring at me out the window. So let's go to the feed store. We got a smaller water here to replace this right here. Okay. All right. Let me, let me check the temperature in underneath there. Oh. Good, it's perfect, 95. Perfect temperature. Okay, Mom, you ready to be come out? Mom, you're so cute, look. Hi, Steve. Mom, can I have a picture like this? You can pack it here, I'll, I'll help you later. Oh, cute. Yeah, they're scared. They're big and they're small. Oh, this one's small. Oh, Ivy, get your legs up with me. Oh, look, they found the food already. Oh, oh this little black one's so small. This one's the small one. It's black one here. I want to keep my eye on them. Ooh, bite carefully, okay? Oh, hi, small guy. You are so small. This is that black one. This black one is very fluffy. Do you like how they're kind of waiting to be picked up? Because they see the other ones going? Yeah, look at him trying. Oh, he's so dark. He's cute. Is this the tiny one? Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, I'm a little worried about you, buddy. You are tiny, girlfriend. This one's very tiny. Oh, Oh, we're gonna. Mom, watching me. So some are gonna go under the brooder there. They, some have found the food already. Hi. Some have found the food over here already, and I want to make sure they find the water. Hi, Daddy. Sure they find the baby chicks. Did you find? Yeah, good. Okay. So, so baby chicks will teach each other. So as long as one of them finds the water, then usually the others will too. Mommy, water. Yeah. Is this big? Wow. How is this big? All right, so we've got um, Midnight Majestic Marins are these black ones. This one is very friendly. Hi, baby. These are Midnight Majestic Marins, and these are Golden Comets. The yellow ones are Golden Comets. Touch his head, her head. They're all girls. They're all. Mm -hmm. You want to see JJ? <laughs> Yeah. See, so this one, part of the way that you can tell that she's a female is because see her wings? See how she's got long ones and short ones? She's got a variety of size of wings. That's part of how you can tell. 
her feathers there, pattern. I'm giving you your friend back. There you go. The gift is back. So the other thing is, if you look at all of these, they're female because you can see their feathers right here. So baby chicks, when they're in their eggs, they uh, only the females start to grow feathers inside the egg. So if they're newborns and they've got feathers, then they might be females. If they're born and they don't have any feathers, then they could are more likely males. So there's a few different ways you can tell, but it's not an exact science. These two are called Easter Eggers. So they make colorful eggs. Aww. And these I got different colors. So I got a brown one and a gray one. Look at how pretty, look at this one's eyes. Can you zoom in? Look at this one's eyes. It looks like it's wearing eyeliner. This is mommy's. I like that little gray one. This is mommy's favorite chicken so Put far. Put it in there, mom. Okay, and this is another Easter egger. And this one's oh, like more of like a gray. One. I think this one looks like it's got penguin it colors. Looks like a penguin. <laughs> or like a dodo bird. Oh, so I'm gonna show him, show her, I mean. Gonna show her where the water is. Look out, Millie. Okay, let me, I need to show this other one if she'll let me catch her. Catch her! There we go. I just wanna make sure she knows where the water is. Touch her beak in it. And touch her. I did already. I did, see? They're all coming out for water. And then she can find the food. They're probably gonna go under there to get warm because they were in this box on the way home. The other thing we did was add just some rocks into this water just to weigh it down so they can't knock it over easily. And then also it keeps them from being able to get too much in there and potentially drown themselves. That's just the biggest concern with the water with these tiny guys. All right, we've got them all set up in here. I was very distracted when I went back to the store and forgot to get another feeder, but they seem to be okay. Everybody seems to be moving about the cabin just fine. So I think they'll all be a-okay. And now I'm just gonna cross my fingers that they're hiding underneath there. I'm just gonna cross my fingers that they're all healthy um, and that we don't have any losses. I would really love it if, if all of these chickens made it to out to the coop to be our laying hens. With a family our size, we eat a ton of eggs. We go through a ton of eggs. So um, I'm hopeful that all of these chickadees will make it and be able to go out to the coop and become our laying hens and provide our family with lots and lots of delicious eggs. I'm excited to have the Easter eggers. That was just a fun surprise to be able to grab a couple of those. And I have to be honest, the brown Easter egger is definitely uh, one of my favorites as far as the way that she looks. It looks like she has like eyeliner on and she's so pretty. So. <sighs> Fingers crossed, if you want to follow along our journey with the baby chicks, you can always follow me on Instagram um, to see kind of behind the scenes with the baby chicks. But that's it for today's video. I hope that this was helpful. Leave everything linked in the description box if you need links to resources or things that I spoke about um, in regards to the brooder and setting it up. But that is it, y'all, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye.